Welcome to day number six of training Mustang Cherokee with positive and negative reinforcement. In the last session, we were working in the arena because our round pen was, uh, it needed some work. And so, long story short, we kind of somewhat just moved to this area and we never really got the round pen fully functional. And there were weeds, like, all the way up to, like, the first or second bar or somewhere around there. So, we have definitely done a significant amount of weeding. There is still more work to be done, um, but, but we can at least walk in here now. So, that is where we are working with Cherokee today. I'm going to begin the session by establishing connection and giving Cherokee some reinforcement. Um, this is kind of just a way to show him that we are starting to work. Um, there are pleasurable stimuli in today's session um, and just get him ready. So what we were trying to do in the arena was to do a full-fledged evaluation and see what all Cherokee knows and doesn't know. Lunging was what set him off the last time, and then we ended up just going into the smaller pen. So now that we're in a round pen, we are going to really see what he knows and doesn't know and kind of put like the targeting and everything like that aside for now. One thing I'm noticing as Cherokee is lunging is that when I step in front of the drive line and ask him to go the other direction, he turns with his butt facing me. Um, one thing that I like to do at Wild Child is for the horse to turn with their face facing me instead of their butt because sometimes um, that butt facing you can turn into kicking or another defense mechanism. And so I really want to make sure that he's focused on me and he turns to face me with his head um, instead of his butt. So you'll see right here, I stepped in front of him and then the second he looked at me, I backed up. He did like debate whether or not he he was going to turn his butt, but he did take a moment to actually think about it. Here it is again. One of the things I will be working on with Cherokee over time is speed. Uh, you might notice that he is not very relaxed. His gait is choppy. He's going super fast. His head is high. And these are all signs that he's not too big a fan of what we are doing right now. So that's something we will be working on in the future. Right here, I go to step in front of that drive line and ask him to change direction. He turned with that butt towards me. So I'm going to immediately ask him to continue going in a circle around me, just the opposite direction. Now, if Cherokee stops and faces me with two eyes, uh, I'm going to do exactly what I do right here. I step in front of that drive line. Um, he faces me with two eyes, and then I'm going to retreat, um, release that pressure, and then stand in the middle of the round pen. This is what's called negative reinforcement. I am subtracting a stimulus to increase the frequency of a desired behavior. The desired behavior is him turning to face me with two eyes, and I'm releasing that pressure as that reinforcer, that encourager to try and get him to repeat that behavior. After a few more times of going around, you'll notice that he's starting to stop and think, right? He comes up, he puts that head over the fence as if he's going to turn with his butt towards me. But then he takes a moment and he realizes that what he needs to do to have that pressure um, taken away is to turn and face me when he does it. Again, I go to ask him to stop. And this time he doesn't even hesitate. He just turns and looks at me. I back up and I give him a moment. Um, if he wants to sit there, he can sit there and stand. Um, this is just kind of my reward for him doing what I'm asking him to do. With practice and repetition, the horse will eventually start to turn with their eyes facing you every single time. Cherokee is already picking up on that, all signs that he is an incredibly intelligent horse, and so far he seems to be a really fast learner. When you are lunging a horse, you are driving them away from you. And so just as you drive them away, you also want to spend some time drawing them towards you. So I'm going to go back and do some feed and retreat. This is an exercise that you'll probably see me do dozens and dozens of times throughout this series, throughout my page, and more. Because Cherokee is still quite unsure of humans and a little bit nervous, he's probably a little bit confused by this because I just spent some time driving him away and now I'm asking him to come towards me and he's probably like, what the fuck? Um, with horses who have done this many, many times, they can see that drive away as something that is not negative right with him he was just running around in the wild when a horse tries to like nip at him or drive him away that's a bad thing he hasn't quite learned that when I drive him away it's not always a bad thing that I'm not trying to um, cause him any harm or cause him any damage or stress and so with time any horse will learn that they can be driven away and they can be drawn to the human and that the human really isn't a threat um Drive and draw is just something that horses not only do with themselves, but we can also apply with our horses as it's something that is a natural behavior for them, and it can prove to be very beneficial in training. As you could see, when I first started doing feed and retreat, Cherokee was kind of like 
walking away after every time he took a reinforcer. Now you can notice that he's standing there and he does come back up to me for that reinforcer. He's not walking off as much. He's not like freaking out as much. And this time you might even notice that he comes to follow me before I even hold out that treat. So he's starting to realize that I'm drawing him towards me. I'm not a threat and I still come with a lot of fun, pleasurable stimuli. Um, again, I go to walk away. He looks at me and then he eventually does um, start walking towards me again. So overall, this is a huge success. Us. What we're going to start focusing on over these next few weeks is what's called the prerequisites of starting a horse under saddle. And so basically, these are a bunch of behaviors I feel a horse should know prior to starting them under saddle. Um, they're basic groundwork exercises. They all have many purposes. And while Cherokee is still a ways from being started under saddle, I'm going to see which of these he knows so that I can start to make a training plan going forward. One of the prerequisites is lunging, and we already worked on that today. Then we have desensitizing, and this is one of the things that set him off the last last time that I worked with him. So you'll notice that I go to or swing that lunge whip over his back and he immediately starts sidestepping. Um, he's very nervous. He's very unsure of this. So right there, I put the lunge whip on his back and then I'm going to immediately reinforce. Um, another thing that you might start to notice is that Cherokee, every time I throw that lunge whip over his back and he feels nervous, he starts to walk towards me. Um, and this is something that I kind of want to nip in the bud because I don't want him thinking that he can immediately run over me. You'll see that I make him back up a step and then I give him that reinforcer when he stands um, for the lunge whip. Um, the biggest thing, I do feel um, happy that he feels confident enough to walk towards me for comfort, but again, this can eventually lead to him blowing through me, running me over, and causing a whole bunch of other things that are quite a little bit dangerous that I really don't want to encourage. I'm going to have like little segments of desensitizing him, so like I'm going to throw the lunge whip over him like four or five times and then reinforce, and then throw it over him like five or six times and then reinforce and switch sides and stuff like that, and all this is going to do is just continue to grow his confidence with the lunge whip because he is receiving reinforcement um, when he stands politely and allows the lunge whip to kind of do its thing. Then we're going to work on lateral flexion and this is basically when the horse turns their nose like almost all the way to their shoulder. This is beneficial for a few reasons. For one, it helps kind of loosen up those muscles in the neck. It prevents them from getting too terribly stiff. Um, this will also help with responsiveness and when it comes time to start him under saddle, this is a building block behavior to um, teaching him to turn. So there's a lot of different benefits of lateral flexion. There's even more than the ones I just listed. So I have my hand on his withers. I'm applying minimal pressure with the leader rope and as he turns his hind end away, um, I'm pretty much just following him. So what I'm looking for is I want him to give me some give, right? As I'm asking for that pressure, asking for him to turn his head, um, I want him to give into that pressure, which he did just right there. When he gives into that, then I'm going to give him a reinforcer. As I switch to the other side, I'm going to stand in the exact same position, apply some pressure, and he immediately just gives. He doesn't turn his butt or anything like that, and so I'm going to reinforce that behavior. Keep in mind, you don't want to be like pulling so hard that they're trying to brace against you. You just want to apply a minimal amount of pressure, enough for them to feel it, um, and enough for them to understand what you're asking. Moving on, we're going to work on backing up. So my goal is that I just lean forward like I'm doing here, and Cherokee backs up for me. I'm going to teach this by starting with the least amount of pressure and slowly increasing it. So for example, you'll see here that I lean forward. He doesn't go. So I shake that lead rope a little bit. He does eventually back up, but if he weren't, then I would have applied some pressure on his chest. And now that he's backed up, I'm going to reinforce. However, he's still chewing the last reinforcer. Now we're going to do it again. I go to lean towards him. I don't even have to shake that lead rope and he backs up at least one step. Over time, I'm going to start asking him for two steps and three steps and four steps. But right now, I'm just trying to get him to back off of the pressure of me leaning forward. I don't want to have to increase the pressure every single time I ask him to back up. The next behavior is picking up all four feet. Now, be super duper careful when doing this. I have no idea how Cherokee does with his feet, and if he decides he's going to strike or rear or kick out at me, I really don't want to be in the line of fire. I really cannot get hurt. Safety should always be first priority. You'll see here that I'm squeezing his leg and he's kind of picking up his leg. He, he's kind of understanding what I want him to do, but he's not quite bending that knee. And so this could be a sign um, that he he's tolerating me touching his legs, but he really doesn't know how to actually pick up his feet. Um, right now, his hooves are a little bit long, and so I definitely want to get his hooves trimmed uh, as soon as humanly possible. Um, but we'll get there right now just picking up his feet. Right here, he actually bends that knee and then he proceeds to hold it up. I spend this time to really look at it so see what um, what exactly we're dealing with. And then I put that leg back down and give him a reinforcer. 
One thing you might notice is that Cherokee has stopped chewing his reinforcers. His head's a little bit high, his ears are in that position, um, his lips are tight, and these are all signs that he is starting to dissociate. He's entering the freeze response. And so when he does this, I want to take a step back, um, try and get him to chew that reinforcer and realize that he is safe, that nobody's going to hurt him, um, and try and bring him back to reality. Because here's the thing, if he's dissociating, right, if he has developed this freeze response and then he's just not here, like his eyes are glazed over and he's just not mentally here, he's not going to learn anything. He's just off in another world. And so I want to make sure that he is here with us and he is learning as we go along. As I go and try and pick up that hind leg, he does actually pick it up, which I was very proud of. And so I'm going to give him that reinforcer, which he does start chewing this time. So he's starting to like come back to reality. And then I'm just going to spend some time loving on him and scratching on him. Just a way to further show him that he's safe. Nobody's going to hurt him. The second time I go to pick it up, he lets me hold it up. Um, again, another good sign. Um, I just want to take things slow and just make sure that he is doing all right mentally and not freaking out or shutting down. Now I switch to the other side. I try and pick up that front leg and he does actually do it. Um, based on how he's acting, based on the fact that he can pick up all four feet, these are all signs to me that he knows how to do it, that somebody has trained him and worked with him on it before. Now, on the fact that he keeps shutting down while I'm doing this, that leads me to believe that maybe when he was handled with his feet in the past, it wasn't done very nicely because he's kind of just going off in another world. Um, so these are all signs that I need to um, definitely work on this more and start creating positive associations and making this a situation where he doesn't feel the need to shut down. When you have a horse that is shutting down, uh, always take a step back. Try and let them process the information. Give them lots of scratches. Try and get them to take the reinforcer. Um, and, and if you can't, this could be a very good sign that it's time to end the session. Again, if the horse is not mentally there, if they are dissociating and have entered the freeze response, chances are they are not going to learn anything. And who's to say that they're not just going to explode out of nowhere? So now I'm just going to sit on the mounting block. Um, I'm going to reinforce him if he does decide to approach me. Um, if not, then we're going to utilize this time to just exist in each other's presence, right? I want him to realize that I'm not always going to make him do things. I'm not always going to um, introduce scary things, that sometimes we can just exist. I want him to realize that he is safe with me, and sometimes that just means doing nothing. I'm going to take this time to explain to you guys the other prerequisites of starting a horse under saddle. Um, there is vertical flexion, which is the horse lowering their head. Uh, then we have yielding the hindquarters, which is where the hindquarters do a circle around the forequarters. And then we have forequarter yields, which is where the forequarters do a circle around the hindquarters. Before we close off this video, don't forget to go and check out our books. I've got three books on the shelf and they are all on a variety of topics relating to horses. Uh, we also have a podcast out there. It is about the life lessons horses have to teach us. And we also have a merch store. So you can go and get some cool fancy merch, um, sport it, send us a picture of you wearing it and we'll give you a discount on your next purchase. With that being said, I'd like to give you all a friendly reminder that all of the pictures and videos, all of the content you see at Wild Child is funded by myself. I like to do this at absolutely no cost to you guys because the world is so expensive right now and I really just want to help make a better world for the horses we all love so much. However, if you would like to help financially support the sanctuary horses, the materials we need to make and edit these videos, um, I have a list of different ways that you can donate. I'm not a registered nonprofit. I'm just an LLC trying to make a living, support the animals, and help horses and humans overcome their problems while advocating for kinder, more humane horsemanship methods. With that being said, if you have not already, please hit the red subscribe button. Check us out on Facebook, Instagram, our podcast, and all of the many, many other things things that we have available. Thank you all for watching. Stay strong, stay true, stay wild, and we'll see y'all next time.